up Loud and Proud crowd? Welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching today's video. I first want to let you guys know, you could be winning this 2002 Ram 3500 24 valve Cummins, six speed manual, 140,000 miles, leather interior, heated. It's freaking awesome. This truck is a stud truck, it's rust free, it's beautiful. If you wanna have a chance to win this, information is in the description below. Every $15 you spend on hats, like this one, hats, shop shirts, t-shirts, hoodies, keychains, decals, all that stuff. Every $15 you spend on loud and proud gear gets you another entry to win this truck. We've given away, I believe, six trucks now, and everybody has just walked away with something that's just like awesome and super cool and just like greatest feeling in the world based on what I've heard from them. And it's just a super cool and amazing opportunity for one of you guys who watch and support what I do through purchasing the merch and watching the videos and stuff. Gives you an opportunity to win a truck like this one. We're gonna pull it out here more, you're gonna see more of it. Just keep that in mind. Information is in the description below. Let's get into the video. see we have my 1991 first gen project truck here and then we have our 2002 3500 24 valve Cummins and this is our current giveaway truck just so you guys can better get a better look at that thing beautiful truck so in today's video if you can hear me over the sound of the amazing diesel roar we're going to be telling you the top things to look for when buying an old Dodge truck there's things that you want to see and things that you don't want to see and we're going to get into that list right now so the first thing that we're going to be getting into is the things that you do want to see when you are looking to go buy a Cummins make sure it has a diesel under the hood Thank you. I, you guys would be surprised at the people that would be like, oh dude, is this a good deal on a, on a diesel? And it's got a freaking V8 badge on the side of the door and on the other side and they pop the hood and there's a 5.7 Hemi under there. No, it is not a diesel. Make sure it is a diesel. And I get it, if you're a beginner, you just see a Dodge Ram and you think since it's a 2500 or a 3500 that it's a diesel, not always the case. Now for the most part, most of my fans watching my videos are not like that, they're not that obviously like uh, unaware of the difference, but there are people out there that don't know a whole lot about diesels and they can get kind of confused and they don't fully understand what the difference is. First is, it's a freaking diesel. Um, it runs on diesel fuel, not gasoline. They sound a lot different, they run a lot different, they make a lot more power running on a lot less fuel. A lot of differences, if you don't know all the differences, do a Google search. But the first thing you wanna find when you're looking to buy Cummins is a freaking Cummins under the hood. That's where we're gonna start off. So the difference is this is a 12 valve and that's a 24 valve. Now for the most part, the things that you're looking for on these trucks are the same from the very first one, I believe, which was an 88, all the way up to the brand new ones, which are the 2019 Rams. And all of these same principles will apply in terms of what to look for and the main big things that you gotta be concerned about, things that you do and don't wanna find. The only difference is obviously with the newer trucks versus the older trucks, there's more things that could go wrong versus not as many things like with the older trucks, but we'll get into that stuff. But really quick, what we're gonna do is the first thing, which is blow by any engine. Now, you have to keep in mind, most of these old trucks, especially 12 outs, even with 80, 50,000 miles on them, there's always gonna be generally a little teeny tiny, like little steam-ish kind of effect when you take off the, the oil cap. It's like really, 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 really light, but we're gonna show you the difference between normal and like what's a standard amount of blow by and what's like bad like uh don't freaking buy that crap this first <laughs> is a good representation of what not to buy we'll show you that in just a minute this thing has white smoke puffing out of there with the thing not even running but we're going to show you the difference between one that's good and a good engine that's running healthy and one that's not let's get over to the 24 valve first and show you what it should be like what we're going to try to do is block the fan
So I've actually had a very, very, very light, very, I'm talking like a really thin, like almost like a, I don't know how to put it, like a really thin, light amount of like a little haze that came out of there. But guys, that's pretty freaking standard. Even our, our white version with 80,000 miles on it has that same amount that comes out of there. That's just, that's like a standard amount of, I don't even know if you call it blow-by, but I guess blow-by, if you want to call blow-by, if there's anything that kind of comes out of that oil cap. That's one of the ways of being able to know. There's all different ways you can do it, go about it if you want to be more scientific and look at certain different components in the engine and this and that and all that jazz. But just a real quick, you're looking at a truck on a lot, you don't know what to think. That's just a real quick way. Now, I'll show you the difference between that, which is an acceptable amount, and excessive, and you want to watch out for it. So if you come over here and you look at this truck and you look underneath, there's going to be a little bit of residue and stuff. I mean, the truck's almost, you know, 16 years old, 17 years old. So we're turning that truck off. But, as you guys saw, down the road I was trying to show you while the truck was running on that rear main, which is where the transmission and the engine mount together, there's nothing leaking out of there. Now, if it's like a very, 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 like there's like one drop sitting there, and it's like one little tiny pin drop comes out every, you know, thousand miles, that's not a big deal, okay? Every diesel has a little bit of an oil leak here and there. But you don't want it dripping out like this one. And I'll show you the difference. There's a big difference. So now what we're doing is we're actually taking the first gen down the road and back. The 24 valve got to run for a little while, for almost 10 minutes before we check the blow by on that. This, however, we haven't had it running long. So what I'm trying to do is speed up the process by just taking it down the road, getting it kind of hot, coming back, and then we're going to check the blow by. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. to show you all the blow-by and leaks and stuff on this truck. It's not horrible, but it is puffing out some white. And if you look at the rear main, it leaks really bad. Everything you do not want when you're buying one of these trucks used. So look for those things. Let's pop the hood and check the blow-by coming out of the oil cap. You check the dipstick sometimes. And sometimes there's even stuff on that. That is something you do not want. Now we're going to check the oil cap because chances are there's some white puffing out of that now just after about three minutes of driving this truck. That is some freaking ball by. That's what you don't want to find when you're buying a used Cummins diesel. to find when you go looking for these trucks run it first at least at least five minutes get a little bit hot and then then check the stuff you know what I'm saying now sometimes you can just check it while it's idling just after starting it up letting it idle five minutes and you can check it and sometimes it'll still you know you'll still be able to tell um, but it's just safer if you just run the truck actually get it up to running temperatures then you can come back park it once everything's before it really cools down 
and just check it. Now this truck, you saw the difference with that truck. The actual blow by, if you want to call it that, was like hardly anything. Like that camera could hardly even pick up anything. Now, there is always going to be generally, unless it's like a brand new, like my brand new 2018, chances are that truck doesn't have a blow by, but it's got 12,000 miles on it. However, any truck that's actually been driven for any amount of time or worked for any amount of time, there's going to be a little bit for the most part, especially these trucks, they're just, they're an industrial engine. Like the 12 valve especially, they are true and true industrial engine. They're gonna have a little bit, that's just kind of how they are. Um, but again, the rear main, check for your rear main leak. Like this truck has a really bad one. There's a, there's a big puddle under there now. Actually, let me show them. There's a big puddle under there. You don't want that. <laughs> okay, this truck leaks more than a quart of oil a freaking month. This truck hasn't been moved since I started it up and let it run for a little while. No drips, none. That's what you want. You want no drippage because that is not good when it comes to your trucks. Now let's get on to looking for rust. But when I bought my first Cummins diesel, I had no idea what I was doing. Just super excited. I was a kid that had, you know, 10 grand in his pocket from selling his car, working like crazy and all stuff. I'm like, oh, I finally got 10 grand. I'm like, I'm gonna go buy a diesel. I wanna buy a Cummins. And that's all I knew when I went to go buy one, and I didn't know any of this stuff to actually check for. So when I went to go buy my first Cummins diesel, I looked at only two different trucks. Sometimes you don't have to look at many trucks as long as you look at really good trucks, but at the time, 10 grand can get you a really nice 12 out now, but at the time, I don't know why, but there was like nothing for sale and everything that was for sale, nobody was moving on prices, it was way too expensive. It was just kind of, it kind of put me in a tight spot because I'm like, oh, I want to start doing YouTube. I want to buy a 12 valve and start building it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's okay if it has rust because we'll just fix it and make content and all this stuff. And I wasn't really thinking about actually like a good solid running truck that was very safe and sound to take down the road. I was just looking for something that I'm like content machine, content machine. And I'm thinking like, okay, content's great, but it costs money. And at the time I was just starting. So I didn't have any money coming in from my videos. So I was having to work to try to work other jobs to try to pay for my YouTube channel to be able to keep it alive. But anyways, I'll show you the things that I should have looked for that I didn't. Now, when it comes to looking for rust on a truck, some people, the first thing they do is they're like, oh, the body looks good. That's a good sign. Oh yeah, in the wheel well, the frame that you can actually see right there, that is obviously easy to pressure wash and clean salt off of, keep that in mind. It's not the easy to get to places you gotta worry about. It's the places you don't get to, you gotta worry about. Oh, that's clean, the body's good, there's no rust, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, cap corners, cap corner sound. People don't think about that kind of stuff and they're like, oh, we're good. They don't even look under the bed, they don't look around the fuel tank, they don't check out any of those areas and they're just like, oh, I'll call it good. And they just buy the truck and they move on. Next thing you know, you've got freaking frame holes covered up by putty and, you know, bed liner mixes and stuff like that. Like, I had a truck here and this bracket right here was glued on and behind that bracket, this whole thing there was all, not this truck, so don't <laughs> don't get that mixed up, not this truck, but a truck like it that I had, it was all puttied up and there was a hole in the frame that big. I kid you not, you could put your fist straight through the frame. That's how big that hole was and I had no idea, I didn't check, I didn't know anything about diesels or these trucks in general and where spots are that they rust. Come over here and I'll show you another spot you really gotta check out for. It. Now on this truck, it's actually really clean, but they're not always like that. And I'm gonna take the camera from her so I can get down on my back and show you what I'm talking about here. But to get down under here, and don't be afraid to look like you're being nosy and looking everywhere on the truck for rust because that's what that's what you're doing. <laughs> so if you look at the frame here, this truck is has a freaking nice frame. Now there's a little bit of rock dust and stuff. You lived on a gravel road, but this frame, put your fingers up on here and make sure there's not a bunch of dirt and rust sitting up on the shelf. This one, there's nothing at all. It is super, super clean. Look how sharp those edges are still where the frame meets together right there. There's not a bunch of rot kind of connecting in those areas. If you look up here, there's a bunch of rock dust, but the cab mounts are perfect. They're rock solid all the way down. No cab mount issues anywhere. A lot of rock dust, but you know, it's kind of keeping it from, uh, you know, keeping it from rusting. Um, but nothing like that. No frame rust. You got to check the frame. This is rock dust here. Wipes off. Not frame rust. There's a big, big difference. Check on that side. The inner side, for whatever reason, on these frames, if you go up here, sometimes on either, sometimes on these frames, either on this inner side, on the driver's side, or the exact same thing on the passenger side, for whatever reason, this intersection on the back side can rust. I don't know why 
It just does. Sometimes they can actually get bad enough to where they're cracked right through here where the frames merge together. Same on this side, where the frame merges together right next to the right next to the fuel tank area. They sometimes crack right here. If the frames are kind of weak, and then all that weight over time, they work the trucks, hauling goosenecks, trailers, throwing way too much firewood in the bed, and they crack the frame over time if it's already rusty as it is generally. Not a trick like this, obviously your frame's not gonna just crack when you work it. This is a perfectly good, strong, sturdy frame, but I'm saying a frame that's already rusted out like crazy, and they work these things, they don't realize it, but they can slowly over time create cracks because the frame's already weakened. Cab mounts, what to look for? No body cab mount rust where they mount to the body and from the frame, no cab mount rust. That's a lot of rock dust. Like I said, I think it lives on a gravel road, um, but that's acceptable, just not rust. And if it's bed liner spray, pick at it a little bit and just see if it's like mushy or if it's rock solid and they actually did it the right way with a cab off restoration. Another area to look for for rust on these trucks, go up front and again, this applies to most years of Dodge trucks. Go up front and look right here. Can I go to the front of the truck and look under the front bumper? This is the front bumper. Look right here where you would like mount a plow. No rust here, okay? A lot of these trucks, don't know why, even Nasty Red has it. Hole rusted out here. My white toilet that I had, hole rusted out here. I mean, you just got to watch that. They always rust out there, I don't know why. Check both sides under the front bumper. You know what I'm talking about, because if you check under it, a lot of them, they're rusted out. Now, that being said, this truck in those same areas, for example, the frame on this truck is actually really nice. The only things that are not so nice, and I'll show you, cab mounts. That's the difference between a good cab mount and a bad cab mount. Don't buy a truck that has a cab mount like this unless, you're, unless you look and you know it's there and you're okay with it, but for the most part, I try to avoid it. You really don't want to deal with that stuff. It's not a lot of fun. And then same, just all the way down, just check all your cab mounts, your bed mounts, stuff like that. On this truck, that's probably the worst of it. Stuff like this, like a little hole in the rocker, it's not a big deal. Stuff like that, like a little bit of rust on the bed, it's not a big deal. When it comes to trucks, for me, when I'm looking at trucks, first thing I do, like with this white truck, the first, I didn't go looking around the body, like, oh, I wonder how clean the body is. I got on my back and I crawled around. And I'm like, first I want to make sure it's not a 53 block, which you should only have to worry about with 98 to, to 01s, sometimes 02s. 53 blocks are just thinner. They're not quite as durable under a lot of pressure, so just be careful. But I have heard guys say that they've ran them for a long, real long time, and they haven't had any issues with them. So that's really just kind of like, that's kind of personal preference, whether you think that's a big deal or not. But I'm just telling you the main things you have to look for, no matter what diesel you're going to look at. But more specifically, these Cummins diesels and these Dodge trucks in general. So like I said, body rust, not a huge deal. Frames, be weary. Engine blow by, check for it. Rear main leaks, stuff like that. Hub leaks aren't a huge deal because you can fix those, but they are annoying and they're kind of a pain in the butt. So if you don't really want to deal with it, just move on to the next truck if you're going to be that particular. But I'm just showing you the main things that I look for when I go to buy a used Cummins diesel. So hopefully you enjoyed that video and these are the top things that I look for when looking to buy a used Cummins diesel. They pretty much apply all the way from the 88s, which was the first 12 valve pickup truck that they ever sold, all the way until the brand new ones. A lot of the same things apply. Now obviously if it's a brand new truck, chances are it's not gonna have a rear main leak and this and that and yada yada. But when it comes to high miles and blow by, still check for that kind of stuff. Um, and leaks are still possible, so don't just think, oh, cause it's new, out the window. Still check for those certain things. Um, unless the truck's literally got zero miles, that's different, but you know what I'm saying. Just be weary, make sure you keep your eyes open, look around all the areas, not just like the body and the engine base clean and stuff like that. For example, this truck, I didn't really care that it had a blow by and stuff, because I'm like, dude, I don't even care. It's just a project truck, we're gonna make some cool videos, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Worst case scenario, I parted it out and I get my money back, but I wasn't really worried about that, but for a lot of people that, this is their daily driver, this is the truck they rely on, they gotta work it, stuff like that, this is why I'm making this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video of what not to buy, and what to buy if you're gonna if you really are wanting to be particular and look for the right type of truck in the ideal situation this truck right here the white one is like the go-to in my opinion of like what to look for when buying one of these trucks used if you can have the budget and if you can get lucky and find the deal um, mileage isn't a huge deal in these trucks either just something to point out it's more about those things that we talked about because like for example 
This truck's got tons of miles. This truck's got almost a million miles on it. Okay, it's kind of expected for it to run like crap a little bit. This truck has 140,000 miles. You know, there's a difference, but sometimes you can find a 300, 400,000 mile truck that's maintained by an old man like to a T, it's perfect, and it might not have much blow by at all. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he doesn't just let it sit there and idle on a farm for hours, or he doesn't do, you know, whatever. He doesn't hot rod the thing, it's bone stock, stuff like that. So you just gotta be careful. Um, mileage isn't usually a huge deal, but just check those things, and if they're good, you're good. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this video and the comparison between what to buy and what not to buy. Thank you guys so much. Comment down below, subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to enter the giveaway to win that truck. Every $15 you spend on LMP gear gets you another entry to win. Information is in the description below if you want to enter to win that white truck, which is going to be over in about 25 days. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.